Your father? No. With all that struggle that you're going through? Yes. You had a rich dad. Still he was rich is. even then. Yes. After our mother passed out, my father kicked us all out of the house. So we were homeless for like five years. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Guys, I'm excited. I have been looking forward to this episode. It was supposed to have actually happened last year. It's happening, I think, maybe nine months later you almost a year later and i think at the time when i wanted to connect with her we even ended up having lunch we even ended up going out for drinks we were with some people we ended up attending somebody's party but it was like a loungy type of sundowners you know and um it was such a beautiful moment to experience your personality how kind you are and what you were up to at the time i think you were working towards launching your business not the youtube one the other one that we will talk about she's one of the people that are on the forefront of south african entertainment youtube the reason why she's here to come and share tips and knowledge on how she's grown her youtube platform to over i had not even 100 i think 200,000 now ne? i mustn't disrespect yeah, you I don't. over 200,000 subscribers she's bigger than all of us a lot of us but um she's one of the people who started early she has been leading in the in the in the digital marketing space and just in this youtube thing and since mena i'm so excited about youtube lately and i see it as an opportunity for a lot of young people to change their lives because i'm seeing such lives change right in front of our eyes and that's why she's here to give us a youtube beginners masterclass ladies and gentlemen welcome digital marketer businesswoman entrepreneur youtuber Podcaster, oh wow, me! Yeah. <laughs> hi, <laughs> hi, hi, DJ Spoo. How Thank are you? you? I'm humble. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly Bocha. <laughs> I have been looking for this moment, Thank you for making it. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> and thank you for the patience the last time, and thank you for the patience today. You're welcome. <laughs> and today we had Makwenya. Yeah. We had Acha. And she's like, no, I don't want none of that. I'm on a strict diet. I can't tell you. People are going to just start laughing because how many diets have I been on? Serious? <laughs> yeah, guys, it's not easy. Oh, well, I'm welcome. I'm excited to actually even speak to you because with this YouTube thing, we're always watching you guys on our phones. Mm -hmm. We end up thinking like we know you, you know? Yeah, I think that that's the beauty of YouTube, honestly. I've, I, it's always like that wherever i meet my followers who are ninjas hi ninjas which came oh hi ninjas <laughs> <laughs> oh you call them ninjas mm -hmm. oh okay i get you yeah so whenever like i meet them it's always just fun because you know people like you are meeting someone i don't know you but you know me and you feel like we're friends and someone will run jump hug you and so you just always have to be ready because you know yeah linda when i first met you like i really felt like i've known you <laughs> but it's just that you're always popping up on my phone i'm always just watching your content yeah for me i'm passionate about showing young people other ways of making money in south africa unemployment rate right now is over 50 percent all the way up to almost 70 percent of young people are unemployed yeah and this youtube thing has been changing lives i've been a, a follower or consumer 
consumer of the YouTube content for many years and it's been done predominantly by overseas YouTubers. Yeah. But I'm glad that eventually since the COVID-19 coming this way, I'm seeing more and more South Africans are on it. But still, I still see a lot of them are still sleeping on it. Yeah. So I want us to get into that um, type of content. Yeah. For me, a YouTube masterclass, which is what you are on about as well. And we will talk about the one that you're having. Maybe let's start there. Mm -hmm. Your YouTube masterclass that's happening in June. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So I think that's the same thing. Um, I've been YouTubing now since 2017. So it's been uh, a couple of years. And so I look at my life before YouTube and then I look at my life now and I live a life that honestly, like not even in my wildest dreams, if you came to me in 2017 and told me I'd be living this life, I would have believed you. <laughs> I don't care if you're a prophet or whatever, I would have said you is a liar. <laughs> so, um, this may, like, I, I suffered a lot. I don't think that it's a secret that, um, you know, my mom passed, I had siblings, dropped out of school, I was cooking up by the side of the road. Um, I've struggled a lot, like financially. I mean, like when it comes to poverty, I was the poorest YouTuber when I started from all the YouTubers that I, I, I saw that way, that way in the YouTube space um, in South Africa. And so it took a lot of hard work because there's a lot of things that people actually do not tell you in terms of the certain privileges that other people have. So let's say some people have got enough money to just go and, you know, splurge on a 70,000 rands camera. So the quality obviously is going to be posh. Um, if you can afford a 70,000 rands camera, it means that your background is going to be proper if you're coming in for makeup you're using proper um makeup which obviously makes a huge difference you know then you're able to put out quality content but when you are someone that does not have those resources number one i do not have pretty pri privilege you know um I'm, I'm a beautiful woman but you are not gonna come and watch me simply because oh she's so beautiful i'm mesmerized by her beauty do you understand what i'm saying so i didn't have that i didn't have the pretty privilege i didn't have the money i had to work really hard and in with working, I had to make sure that I was also understanding the algorithm. Um, I did not have any relative that was famous. I was not famous myself. I didn't have anybody. So I had to really like work from scratch. And unfortunately, that is the reality of most people. And a lot of people actually do not understand that. There are a lot of privileges that actually work for people. Some people now, they've got stories of I'm a sugar daddy, which I've seen that that's like a hit on YouTube where people are talking about, you know, being stranded wherever and this and then they're getting a lot of views. But if you don't have those crazy stories, then it means that you need to literally work like how we, we are all out here working, you understand? And I'm not even going to lie. I'm not someone that likes talking about how much I make. But I do make enough, you know, more. Th I feel like more than enough, honestly. And so I, I honestly just also want there to be the reality for other people. Um, and so that's why I'm doing the masterclass. I do also have um, consulting. So I do consultations off camera, which I've been doing now uh, for years, since 2020. And so in with that, I did realize that there was a lot of people that were coming in for consultations. Some I would look at their channels and the channels were really nice. Everything was nice, but they just did not have the exposure. And so that was when I introduced um, channel shout outs where you, you record a clip for like 30 seconds cons you know your personality is going to come through and i put in my video and then people get to know you put the link of your channel in the description box then that it's like advertising for your channel and i only charge um 380 for that you know and then after that um I did realize that there was a lot of people that would consult with me and then they don't know how to edit videos. I've tried to do consultations where I'm teaching you how to edit via online, um, but it was really difficult and just frustrating because sometimes someone is not getting it. My left is your right. <laughs> your right is my left. Hence, I decided I'm going to do the masterclass where it's going to be basics from everything. By the time the person leaves, um, they will know how to record a video. You can record from a camera you can record from a phone because I started from a 3000 range phone you know um, so you can use your phone the best tricks this and that and these are all stuff that I'm going to be teaching from experience because I literally went through all those stages um, and then yeah so it's going to be everything mostly just to make sure that obviously editing um, 
and also like how to work the algorithm i also was part of the youtube black so i'm the class of 2021 we went through extensive training and so there's a lot more information that i actually have than just you know a normal person that is just on youtube that did not go through the program and so i'm gonna share yeah those um skills that i've also learned we need people like you my sister and we see a lot of americans online and people from all over the world they charge thousands of dollars and all of that to share this information that's why we are humble to have people like you who just you know would do um w would have such a kind heart to share a lot of the information for free and even when you do the event i mean it's not like people are gonna pay a thousand dollars how much is it 500 rands no so it's 1.480 1.480 that's like what in dollars that's uh 500 dollars 520 dollars somewhere there and I and think. that for me that is so reasonable and it's so worth it because on uh, how many people have seen YouTube No, actually, I think 50-something dollars, not 500. Oh, sorry, sorry, 50-something <laughs> dollars, yes. I think, yeah, 50-something or less. Yes, yeah, yeah or, or less, there, yeah. yeah. Where is it happening? Um, So the location is exclusive. Okay. Yeah. And then how do people register? So I'm sure I'm going to send you the poster. You can place it here. Yeah. They can just uh, pay and then send proof of payment. And then that's it. Then they'll be added to a group. Yeah. How many people are you taking? Um, honestly, I didn't even have a number, but the place where I am thinking of have, so I will book the place based on how many people pay, but the place where, um, I'm looking at now already has like 70 people. Guys, trust me, you want to pay for this one. You want to pay for this one because for me, this will be even, and I don't want to compare with education. Education is all great. We love education, but I think it'll be an equivalent of something that is going to take you out of poverty if you're willing to put in the work because some a lot of you have been doing seminars for many years you guys know out there but your problem guys is a few people or a lot of people that attended our seminars since back in 2013 leadership 2020 all the way to now and there's just a group of a lot of you guys that are killing the game now and it's the group that decided to put that information and that knowledge you were sharing when we're bringing Bo Robert Kiyosaki into the country, Bo Richard Branson, Bo Les Brown, Bo Tony Gaskins, all of those seminars that we used to have over and over. And with a lot of our South African um, great entrepreneurs, Bo Tate Robert Kumete, Bo Mama, I, I can just name drop like crazy, but we bombarded a lot of you guys with so much knowledge that only a few of you guys um, barking acted on the knowledge and i see a lot of them are successful now this one won't even take you many years this type of information needs you to act on it immediately but just be consistent because then it's going to require you to be plugged in be engaged and trust me in at least a minimum of three to five years you're going to see a very big difference in your life as you were saying i mean from you started in 2017 when did your life start changing um so due to the fact that i didn't have data like guys i was like poor poor hey uh i didn't have data um i would like upload maybe like twice a week like even just the short videos but not because i wanted to but it was because of i did not have enough data and i would convert to like the lowest quality just so that the video will be able to load um i youtubed for nine months without getting a cent you know and then on the on september that was when i got my first paycheck which was about 23000 rands i think that was the thank you that was like the highest amount that had ever hit my bank at once like i was like like i didn't even know what to do with myself at that time 23 grand was like what honestly and um then after that obviously i did not have problems with data so I took, I remember with that 23,000 rands, that was when I bought my first um, camera. It was 5,000 rands. I went and I bought my first makeup. I just, <laughs> my first Brazilian wig. Like, almost all that <laughs> Let money. Let me see your, your earlier video. Oh my gosh, smooth dot. No, continue, continue. no. <laughs> it's okay. No it no was worries. horrible. <laughs> but On, um, on the Oami Entertainment page. Yes. Yeah? Yeah? But I, I do remember that I when, when I got that, because I was so shocked at the amount i was like guys i did not know that you can make this much on youtube and i told them that my giveaway will be teaching people how to make 
um how to youtube you know so i do have a playlist where i was showing people how to start a youtube channel um different different things there's even a playlist on my channel it's that those videos are very old i remember back then i used to even like give free consultations you know people would call me ask or send me a whatsapp uh, i mean an instagram message i'll just say send numbers i'll call them we'll talk give them advice you can do this you can do that i think that one of the biggest things that i've seen is that a lot of people don't want to put in the work and so there are people that like we started together but they're nowhere close to me and the only thing that differentiates us is the fact that i did put in a lot more work you know so i think that it also just depends on what you want mm. how did you start and who told you about youtube <laughs> it's actually quite a very funny story um Ooh, we were staying in this other place where we had a, a, a huge fight with the landlord. Um, okay. Oh, Flayhoff. Okay. Where is Flayhoff? Flayhoff. Um, oh, I can't even explain it. Is it around Joburg? Yes. Okay. It's okay. around Joburg. Okay. We're staying with Flayhoff, not too far from Rodibot. Oh, okay. What's the yeah. Okay, okay. So, Flayhoff, we had a huge fight with the landlord. I remember one night she came and removed the door. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had to move from that place so we're looking for a place and then we got a back cottage from like this white people and so when we got there i think they were also desperate they needed people they were like okay we're gonna offer you free wi-fi so they were gonna just give us their password and so with that that was when i started seeing youtube i'm like what these people like what and i was like this is something that i can easily do obviously but at that time because we did not have money um i knew that i needed a phone there was a i think it's samsung j4 yes that i saw and it was three thousand rands we did not have that money but the place where we were staying was three thousand rands and we had put in um three thousand rands deposit so we're like if we were to move to Soweto and get the deposit back, we can buy a phone that can start my YouTube channel. And that's exactly what we did. So we moved from Rodiport to Soweto, took the 3000 went and bought that phone. And that's when I started my YouTube channel. And this is your, this was your first video. I'm not going to play all With of it. With the red background, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. No, no, no. This one? Oh my God, that's like the improved version. Oh, this is the improved version. Yes, just no, type Owami, OMG, yeah. I did it. O OMG, I did it. Okay, yeah. let's go. Owami, OMG, I o did it. That's the, my first Owami. YouTube ever. I'll never video. I'll OMG, never delete that. I did it. Yeah. I wanna hear. I wanna hear even the red way background. Speaking. Uh, Owami, I finally did it. Is yes, it? I okay, finally okay. did it. This is six years ago. It says yeah. six years ago. Okay, yes. let's start. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I want you guys to hear. Hi guys <laughs> and welcome to my channel. I am Owami. And if this is your first time joining me, you are most definitely welcome. How about we become part of this growing happy family by simply pressing on the subscribe button? Um, it's the red button that I think it's on this side. Um, so yeah, this is my very first YouTube video ever, and I am so excited. Of course, nervous at the same time, but more excited because I've been wanting to do this for quite a while now and which is why I've been living in Struggleville for the past week because I've just been trying to gather things and just make sure that, you know, um, things are a little bit somewhere um, as you know, uh, your start also matters. Anyway, um, I have been struggling, you guys, just to say what will be my very first youtube video and i wasn't getting an answer until i just came up with an idea why not just a simple sit down video that is going to basically introduce myself and the channel to you guys so basically um that's what i'm going to do in this video um as I said in the beginning, my name is Owami and my son name is Shongwane. Um, I live in South Africa and currently I stay in Gauteng. Um, however, I was not born in Gauteng, you guys. I was born in a village called Gaba, which is located in well Benga. Well done! Um, it's an incredible introductory, introductory video. So some of the things that I picked up on this video, you introduced who you were, you're glowing, you're speaking to the camera. Uh, I can see there's light there. Actually, you even put it, you put in makeup because I thought we'd go to a lolling pool. <laughs> You're actually looking nice. You've got a nice weave. You've got makeup there. Um, but you also, apart from introducing yourself, you um, you um, you are aware that you are speaking to an international audience. You said I come from South Africa. Because my my I was like people from all over the world are gonna watch me. I just born and I forget about it. 
So much good feedback. I mean, a lot of people were showing you love. You came here after your 90K video. Oh, these are the ones who came They came years back later. like, yeah. yeah, now they wanted but, to. Ah, I love you. You were destined <laughs> for greatness. Still looking hella amazing. Oh my gosh, you came a long way. I'm encouraged to watch you. I'm originally from Pumalanga, but grew up in Pretoria. My parents only went to rural areas after 2010. I'm happy and proud to be a village girl, both with a touch of Mamelodi life. So you also inspire other people who come from the villages. So a lot of people started abarking, following your story and going back to your first video. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I always talk about it to say, guys, to be honest with you, I do feel... Um, what a lot of people actually do not understand is that when you're in your 20s, especially like your early 20s, most times you don't even care about the future. And it's not, I feel like not necessarily to say care, but you don't take it as You're serious. living for now. Yeah. You're living for now. You think the future is a hundred years exactly, away. Exactly, you know. And then so, I didn't know that very soon I'll be grey. Yo, <laughs> it's 20 like years that. went like this. Exactly, mm. it, it goes like that, you know. And so I dropped out of school. And um, I was so poor and I was struggling so much that everyone literally wrote me off. Everyone wrote me off, you know. And so YouTube gave me a second chance in life. I swear to God, YouTube gave me a second chance in life. Um, I got, you know, thank goodness that this is also my passion. But at the same time, the struggles that I was going through, like, you know, cooking pub by the side of the road, selling my car to buy a caravan, um, that was like hard labor. And I was making nothing compared to what I'm making now when I'm sitting in my house, my studio is in my house. If it's raining, to to go to my office is just a walk from my bedroom to my office. You understand what I'm saying? And so I do think that a lot of people are actually sleeping on this. YouTube can actually even be like, you know, your other source of income. I honestly don't believe that it's a lot of people that can be able to live a comfortable life in South Africa with just one salary, you know? And so if, if YouTubing is something that you can do, a lot of people are using smartphones. They use expensive phones with, um, you know, camera lenses that are really good that the quality of the video is going to be okay. A lot of people have got experience. The job that you work, you've got experience with that. Why not YouTube that? Why not give people advice on that job? Why not give advice to the kids that are at school, in school learning to become, you know, the, the, the same profession as you have and then give them tips, give them advice on this and this and make money from that. Why would you not want to do that? And I think that um, the other thing again is that with, with Corona, it showed you that your permanent job is not so permanent. How many people were retrenched? You understand? So if there's an opportunity for you to can build something for yourself, why not do it? How do I know what content to focus on? That's actually very important. I When I started, I started with makeup. <laughs> I was horrible at makeup. Now, flawless, honey. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but when I started, I was horrible at it, honestly. And I learned how to apply makeup from YouTube videos, by the way. So, just start. Just start. Just start with anything. Your audience and your passion, your passion is going to push you towards the direction that you want to um, go to. So, for me, how I actually realized that I loved entertainment was when... Um, we had to move from Free State, I mean, from um, Gauteng to Free State because my ex at that time had lost his job. Um, and so when we got there, I didn't have the chance to sit and do a whole makeup video. So I did a background uh, voice of, of like talking about a celebrity. I can't even remember which celebrity that was. And it got more views than my normal uh, videos. And I realized I actually enjoyed this. It was less work than what I was actually doing, but I was getting more views. And then I do remember that on the 3rd of August, that was the day that Dumas Lil unfortunately passed away. May his soul rest in peace. Um, I reported about him and that video got over 100,000 views. So my channel went viral. I moved from like 150 subscribers to 3,000 subscribers in less than a month. And um, mo majority of the 23,000 rents that came was from the videos that I had to make um, around, you know, the his passing and other news that were actually coming in so a lot of people were coming to my channel you know for the uh, for for the reporting and I kept on updating people no matter what was happening and stuff and so that's how it actually um, you know I got to the entertainment space and I realized that I really enjoy it so even with you you can start with anything just that um, mostly your followers will also just you know give you a bit of a direction on what they love watching and i feel like as a content creator you enjoy uh, creating content that people watch so you will definitely find your way but you do need to start because if you are not starting you will never know 
I get you. And maybe let me backtrack a little bit before we come back to YouTube. Give us your background. Where were you born? Where did you grow up? Were you like Aiko Skolong? And just how was your upbringing? Uh, I was born in Vendagaba. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hey, Mr. McG, here's <laughs> home girl. <laughs> oh, that's why you love reporting about McG. No, <laughs> he's I a homeboy. <laughs> McG is my homeboy, but um, now man, I don't report about McG a lot. He trends a lot, though. No, I'm saying, but back in the, I think maybe, maybe about a year or two. Year yeah, ago, no, so. there are times where if there's something trending that's happening, I'll give my opinion. Okay, on. okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I did go to. I went to so many schools. I went to St. Augustine when I was younger. I went to Gaba Primary School. I went to Mpandeli Secondary School and then moved to Milton. And then from there, I went to Medunsa. Oh, you look at Medunsa and you're doing medicine? I did BSc, then moved to BK, then left. And then, what, span a I I spanned myself. <laughs> you started your own business? Yes, you I was cooking from... pub by the side of the road. You lie! Yes! You started while you, while, while you were still on campus? Uh, so on campus, I used to sell handbags. I was a machonista and I was also the transport lady. In varsity, I bought a car, which was a Kia Picanto, my first car ever. And I used to transport students like from main gate to campus and I was charging 10 rands. Um, and then when they have to go to parties, I would charge like 300, drop them and then, you know, fetch them later, whatever. Like, I feel like I was in varsity to just make money. You've been hustling. I've been hustling. You're like me. I used to no. sell cell phones on campus. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a loan shark even. How did you do that? How were you able to collect your money from? Because why it's about about the line? No, I don't play when it comes to money. Everybody knows me. Like I was there arguing with guys taller than me, and everybody would pay. But besides, I also had a very tall, big, scary ex. Oh, okay. <laughs> he looked scary a bit, <laughs> but I was the one that would do the talking, give me my money back. But they were so faithful. Um, you know, yeah, people were, would always pay. And then um, the the food business. So the food business, um, you I just did. decided one day I was sitting down and so I was like, what is the plan? I had a car um, that was parked and then I was like, I'm going to sell this car, buy a caravan and work for myself. And that's what I did. The best decision you've ever done. It at was time. at that time. It yeah. was um, with that money. I was able to even take my baby sister to school. Um, you know, so yeah, it really honestly did help, but I won't lie. It was the hardest job I've ever had to do. Even till today, like if I'm passing through and I see caravans, like I, 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 I eat street food today because I want to support because I know what, what, um, it takes. What does it take? Oh my God. <sighs> the washing of the pots. They're waking up very early in the morning. You have to be very calculated because today I can cook a lot of food. People don't come. Tomorrow I cook smaller food. People come and now people want more plates. So you need to also have that intelligence to understand that at this point people will be broke. They won't be buying as much. At this point people will have money. So you have to do this. So it's like that business is more difficult than how people just make it look. Because the day that you cook too much food, you're not going to sell people today's food tomorrow. You know, so whatever it is that is left, it's a throwaway. Mm. Um, and then if tomorrow, then a lot of a lot more people come and you did not cook enough. Now your heart is painful because you know you could have made money. So, yeah, it's a very, it's a very difficult um, business. It's also mentally draining. I do remember that. Um, and this is no jab to anyone. But like there were these old, old security guards. At that time, I think I was 26. That would come and they would try shell me. It would just break my heart. Guys, stop. Stop and it. And you were 18 at the time? I was 26. Oh, you were 26? I was 26. Oh, at the time, guys my age. Like in their and 40s. Older than you. And <laughs> like <laughs> really, the security guards, so they also just, you know, they are not looking their best. Like you can see you're old. Maybe they even have an alcohol problem. And so you look at it and you're like, so this person thinks that, like, I'm your type. Like, guys, stop it because you're, like, taking our self-esteem down. <laughs> <laughs> and how much money you would make maybe on, on, the, on the thing? Business? It wasn't honestly that much now. But then, <sighs> some days, you know, I don't know. Some days I would go home with 1,400. Some days it would be 2,000. Some days it would be less. But... You know, at that time, it was money. Mm. Yeah. I always tell people, but Babar Sandy played the ranking. They make good money, mm. and we we tend to look down upon them. Mm. They probably even make a whole lot more money than you do. 
they'll probably make, as she's saying, like two grand a day. Yeah, a day. Like times five, that's like 10 grand. And there's some days towards week, the month end where they make more, right? A lot more, yeah. Yeah. And what's the most you would make? Maybe for my month end. For my month How end. Yeah. So it would just depend, honestly. Sometimes even for my three... Okay. Maybe three point something based on how much food okay, I would I have. I was working alone, so all the workload was on me. So it was mm. quite a lot, yeah. I understand. Yeah. And then what was the next move? Joburg. I did that in Joburg. <laughs> oh, you were doing that in Joburg? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were doing that in Pito. No, when I actually came across YouTube, I was cooking. Oh, wow. Yes. Tell me, tell me more. So. Uh, due to we had to r- r- leave uh, Flehoff, uh, we got a, a cottage in Rodiport. And so, um, yeah, I would go cook. And when I was in the caravan, I would just imagine my life as just a YouTuber, this and this. Guys, dreams do come true. I don't believe that I would be who I am today if I was not with that man. Mm. Yeah, he was really supportive at first. As I said, we had to leave Flehoff. And go all the way to Soweto Mm. just so that we could get the 3,000 and buy me a phone. So that shows how supportive someone was. So he was very supportive, never made fun. Um, I would do my makeup. That was crazy. And he wouldn't like make me feel bad about it. You know, he would be like, oh, you look beautiful. Gave me more confidence. So also the partner you're with at that time, you know, that also do matter. And that time I was also like battling depression like severely. So I think that he also saw that me doing this YouTube and thinking about it made me so happy. So it was lifting me from that depression. And so he had to support. And let's talk about mental health because a lot of people are going through it. I mean, when you've got a, in a country of over half your young people are unemployed. Imagine how many young people are depressed out there. Yeah. Yeah. It's bad. It's really bad, I won't lie. I would, um, I, I would give anything not to go to that space. It was really bad. What took you there? The passing of my mom. Oh, so I struggled for like five years. Yeah. I'm so sorry. No, oh, thank you. And you were telling me earlier, actually a month later, your grandmother also passed away. Yeah. So my mom passed August the 23rd, and then my grandmother passed the 2nd of January, which was both their birthday. They shared a birthday and my ah, grandmother passed well, I mean. on their birthday. So, yeah, that was a really difficult time uh, in my life. And you yeah. dreamt about it. I did. I would have dreams and it would be like such a nightmare for me. And so when I had to leave that nightmare, it was just too much for me to handle. Um, I, I actually almost killed myself. The thing that stopped me, I'd say, was I didn't want to die and leave my baby sisters. So I planned to kill all three of us. And then my younger wife, sister, um, I realized she was pregnant. And so I think that the new child just couldn't make, because I had made peace with them. I was like, God, they, they have sinned. We can all die. It's fine. <laughs> but I don't know, something about this new life that was growing in my baby sister's womb, just, that's why I, I named him the healer. And that's why I'm so close with that child. A lot of people think he's my biological child, how close I am and how much I love him. But if not for him, I, I don't think we would all still be alive. Don't say that. Yeah. One. So you would sit with these people and be like, they don't know what I'm planning in my I mind. actually even asked them from my dad, December of 2013, the year that my mother passed. Because I had made plans. I went to the bank. I loaned and maxed out everything. Spent all that money on all of us. They also didn't know that I was planning to kill us all. It was bad. And so I do think that it's very important that like if someone is going through loss and you know maybe this person was very close to maybe, you know, their mother or some like pay more attention to them because thinking would know they are okay. It's not there. That's when like everyone will be left shocked like, oh, she killed all of them. You know, what was the reason this and this? But in the black community, we don't really um, believe in mental health. Mostly, you know, it's better now that I feel like the privileged are coming on board. But still, I do remember <laughs> there was a day that I was crying and I, I was talking to my parent. I was like, you know, I'm struggling with depression. Like I've been struggling with depression for years. And he looked me straight in my, my eyes and he said, my depression is more than yours. That was the last time I was like, I'll ever talk to him about anything mm-hmm. mental, you know. But I do understand that he comes from a generation that doesn't understand anything about depression mm. yeah they're already coming from a generation of trauma yeah they're coming from apartheid south africa true the everyday life was 
depression. Yeah. <laughs> and so they were not like, even aware. Exactly. You know, you say I'm depressed. Why are you depressed? There's food. Mm. You know, stuff like that. So yeah, it was really tough. But thank goodness that, you know, I've dealt past it. How did you decide to kill yourselves? So I did sit down and I thought of ways. The one way that I had thought of was poison. But I was like, what if they die? Um, I mean, I die and they don't. Or one of them survives. Like, then what happens? So I thought of a gun. I was like, where am I going to get a gun? I um, thought of driving my car off a bridge. Um, but then I was like, what if I die and they don't? And then, uh, like, there was just so much that was in my mind. Because I wanted to make sure that they are dead before I die. Oh, I mean. Yeah. Take me through a mindset of somebody who's depressed and for you to be in that dark place to even think of such things. Are you even aware of what you're going through? Or, or it's just normal that you are planning death and you're like, I don't know what's what goal. Because I a lot of people say that oh, don't judge people who commit suicide because you don't know the mindset they were in yeah. when they did that deed. Yeah, no, you do not know at all. I don't. <sighs> I do personally feel like if you are a parent, um, it's selfish. I know that a lot of people will attack me for this, but it is because you have brought people in this planet, you know. Um, you leave this world. Who are you leaving those kids with? So I think that I'm also just thinking about this from a perspective of someone that lost their mother and went through the most. Mm. Um, but as someone that was ready to commit suicide at that time, I didn't see any way out. There yeah. was no way out. The pain was just too much to a point where yeah. I couldn't handle. And I knew that if I was to die by myself, my sisters were going to suffer. So I think that if it was a matter of I was the only child, no doubt about it, I wouldn't be sitting here. But I can say that I'm really glad that I didn't go through with it because I wouldn't have experienced the life that I live now. What was the turning point? Ray. Ryan was the turning point. Who's Ryan? My nephew. Oh, you as you're saying, Horogonje, she yes. was preggy. Yeah. And then you slowly started coming back in your senses. Yeah, because I was like, now there's an innocent soul mm. in the mix. Um, I like, I, and then all I, for some reason, I feel like this is super weird because when my mom, and I feel like this is going to be TMI. When my mom passed, um, the trauma shook my body so much that I didn't go on my periods, I think, for three months. Mm. So I thought I was pregnant and mm. I was excited a bit. And then um, when I went to the clinic, um, they were like, no, actually, you're not pregnant. And the same day when I was going home, I started going on my periods. And so it felt almost like another loss, another miscarriage. The child that I felt like, oh, this child is the one that's going to, you know. Mm. But at the same time, my baby sister was falling pregnant mm. and I didn't know. <laughs> and so the name Mupozi, I had already given it to the child I thought was in my womb. That when I realized she was pregnant, I was like, okay, that name is going to go to him. And so I think we're the, also just thinking, which again, there was a lot of trauma and a lot of things that were happening, but that child saved us all. Mm. So I do believe that God knew that he had to be here. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. You've got a Hollywood story, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's Joe, crazy. Oh, I mean, yeah. You're no, from, but. You're from far, eh? Yeah, no, it was very traumatic, I won't lie. That was the most miserable time um, in my life. Depression is real. Depression mm, is real. Mm, like, mm. when someone can't get out of bed even, like, for three days straight, um, yeah, it's it's real. And you get exhausted. And any any day that you wake, and at that time after my mom passed, I started experiencing panic attacks. If you've ever had one panic attack, you'll understand how horrible it was. I think I used to have about five panic attacks in a day. Mm. It, it was mentally draining. I couldn't do it anymore. I was physically exhausted i was mentally exhausted i was forever in the hospital they even misdiagnosed me and told me i was having a heart problem and they wanted to operate mm. <laughs> yeah until like you know they they said no you have to go back to therapy and when i went to therapy that's when my therapist actually realized that it had nothing to do with my heart but um the fact that i was having panic attacks and then that's when she started training me on how to like handle them and then that was when um you know i was able to handle them i don't have panic attacks takes anymore mm. yeah so yeah there's a lot that goes on when it comes to mental health i just have to say if someone loses someone that is really close to them like try your best to just be there for them mm. 
Yeah. Your father? No. I think like he contributed a lot into the trauma that I faced. We're in court now. So, yeah. We don't have any relationship whatsoever. And I'm really okay with that. I feel like it's only now that I've gotten to a point where I, I, I could afford. Because my father is rich. I could afford to fight him. What do you mean when you say he's rich? He's rich. Financially? Yes. With all that struggle that you're going through. Yes. You had a rich dad. Still he was rich is. even then. Yes. So, it's only now that we're in court. Um, I did advise my sister last year to take him to maintenance court so that he could take her to school. We are still there. Um, but even this month, we're going back to court. Because since uh, after our mother passed out, my father kicked us all out of the house. So, we were homeless for like five years. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it was it was tough. And that's why I say that Your YouTube... Father. Yeah. YouTube really gave me a second chance. So I, even when I was in varsity, I was struggling with depression, all this that was going on. How do I now support my sisters as well? Because I felt like somehow they were my responsibility, which they were not. But at that time, you know, you're so traumatized that you think um, these are my responsibilities because my mother passed. So whilst I was cooking up by the side of the road to make sure that, you know, one of my sisters is going to like school, my father was busy buying cars. And moving on with his wife and his family. And, you know, it was really traumatic. And so I think that money is one of the strongest, most powerful things that you can have. Because it's only now that I'm able to fight my father. Because of I have money now. How does it feel, though, to be fighting your own father in court? Um, at first it was difficult. <laughs> I don't, I, the only thing I, I regret is not doing this earlier. But I do understand I didn't have the financial capability. But yeah, I wish that I actually did it earlier. That's the only regret that I have. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you very much for being humble to um, open up about your story. I know yeah. it's not easy. Yeah. I mean, this is very, very um, personal things. Yeah. And I think you understand the, the business that you're in. Yeah. But by you speaking out, you are um, touching no, some No, my ninjas know there. about it. They know about it? Yes. Well, so you have spoken about it yeah, before. Yeah, I have spoken yeah. about it, yeah. You're very strong, eh? <laughs> Other people get pissed off when you say, hey, I'm not meant to be strong. Don't say I'm, <laughs> no, um, I'm I, I don't get pissed off. I do. You know, like how they say... What what does not kill you makes you stronger. I believe in what does not kill you crushes you. You have to like build so much strength for you to come out and then people call you strong. This like I've gone through I remember last year we were on a trip with YouTube to Cape Town and I, like I was going through all this mess and I remember I was staying on the eighteenth floor and I looked at the window. Don't say that. I swear. <laughs> This is, even, ever. this is even after you had started YouTube. Yes. I got triggered, I think, when I was in Cape Town because I saw people that are making less than me, living larger than me. And I was like, I have so much. Because from last day, I've been taking my baby sister to college. You know, all oh, that so financial burden is on me. My nephew goes to a really nice private school. I'm paying for that. I have my own uh, self. My other sister also, I have to send money every month because my father sure ain't. So, yeah, it was really depress depressing for me because I was like, look, I, I, like, I'm not someone that actually is into brands like that. I'm not. But um, I, just, I just knew that. You know, if, if my father was doing what he's supposed to do, I wouldn't live this life. I, would, I love traveling. Last of last year, I, I did go to like three d uh, different countries out of Africa, which was my first time ever going out of South Africa. And so last year I was supposed to, you know, do more, but I couldn't because I had to um, take my baby sister to school. I had to sell one of my cars um, just to make sure that, you know, I, I did not have too much financial burden. Because one thing about being poor is you have got a backup plan to a backup plan constantly because you have you have experienced poverty so like that becomes one of your biggest fear <laughs> mm -hmm. you know so i'm always planning ahead of ahead mm -hmm. like if this happens then i i need this way out i need that way out i need that way out so i'm really good when it comes to finances
mm. because of that. So yeah, it was really depressing. I was so triggered. I remember when I came back from that trip. Um, I think for like a week I was just not okay. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's a lot that goes on. Okay, there you are. You do, you do this video that we were just watching a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. and then you do the next video. You do the next video. What kept you posting? Because um, I've just started a 365 YouTube challenge where I'm encouraging a lot of my young followers to post. A lot of them are saying, I Prasbu, thank you for encouraging us, but no, it's difficult. I only have 17 followers, subscribers. Other people, I'm like, I'm only on 100 subscribers. It's very difficult. I've been at this thing for a few months. You know, what do you say to such people? Sorry. Oh, oh, actually, without even no, don't even give them advice. Let's talk about you. What was going on? What kept you pushing to keep on posting? Let's talk about that journey. It took me six months to get to one hundred subscribers. Six months, <laughs> you know. I think that you just have to love it. You really have to love it. Um, it also has to be a passion. So that's why you need to do something that you enjoy. You know, um, and I think that for me. When you can't have something, you want it more. I couldn't post it whatever time I wanted because I didn't have the resources. So anytime I posted any video on YouTube, it was like it's privilege for me, you know. And it made me happy. So I think that's what um, kept me going. But in a way, I, I feel like at first, as much as I believed in myself, I didn't believe in myself like that. So getting 50 views for me was like, oh my gosh. Wow, you know, and I was excited for that. Um, I think that now we live in a generation that's very lazy. And um, whether you are going to attack me or not, the truth is the truth and it's not going to change. Lazy people never get anywhere in life. Um, you know, it's not everyone that's going to win lotto. You still need to put in the work. I always say this, even when it comes to people that you will pay for a shout out. And usually what I do is that I do sit down and I actually go back and I check. Um, you pay for a shout out. Um, I put your, 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 your link. And then after that, um, people go to your channel. You posted a video that week. They will watch that video. Next week, you do not post. Three weeks go by, you do not post. Do you really think that people are still going to be interested? How are you hooking those people? Even me as Owami, I don't go out for three weeks without posting and come back and things are still the same, even as much as I have so many followers. I can relate. I went to America in October last year. I wasn't posting. Yes, I had some content in the bank that lasted me maybe for a month up until November. Mm -hmm. And then the whole of November, the whole of December, the whole of January. I literally, while I was in America, I could have, I could have been posting. And then I'm starting to, I'm trying to get videography in America. They're quoting me in dollars. And I come when you are there. In contact, I go to the ranta. And I spend the dollar. I'm watching my, my, my podcast die. You know? And I was like, you know what? I can't wait to go back home and go create content again and get my content back up. Because when you, when you, when you slack, your YouTube also slacks. Exactly. Consistency. Let's talk about it. Consistency is everything. Consistency is everything. It's a lot of work. Not a lot of people want to put in that work. Even myself, I know this. I used to have a, a service where I would upload 7 a.m. every day, no fail. 2020, I worked like a slave. Because I knew that I was about to get a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going through a divorce also. Yes. So I knew that well, I'm about... you've been through the most. Oh. <laughs> no, I knew that I'm about to go through a divorce. I was like, I'm going to work like a slave, save a lot of money and this and this. And that's how I even got into the YouTube Black program. Because everyone knew that whether it's raining, hailing, or it's hot. 7 a.m. Monday to Friday, four videos a day minimum. And I was making mad money. You know, now... I feel like I'm a single woman. Life is happening. Sometimes I want to have fun, you know. Yeah. So there are times where, you know, this and that. And I, I do honestly um, think that since 2020, I went through a lot. 2021, that was when I shared about the divorce. And that's when I feel like I started dealing with the emotions um, of it. And so, yeah, it affected me a lot. Last year, I've been going through this case with my dad. And so I think that this year, once I'm done with this case, because we're almost done. I'm going to like start to have a breather and then the beast in me is coming back, yo. <laughs> but I like the fact that 
even if you went through the divorce with your ex, I like how highly you speak about him, that he was supportive through your journey. When yeah, you no, he has he had many faults, but he also had um his good. So I'm never going to um just say, no, he was not supportive when he was due to the fact that things went horribly wrong. I'll give him his flowers where I should and where I have to give him um coal, I will. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Let's come back into YouTube. Mm -hmm. What is YouTube Black? So YouTube Black, um, it's YouTube Black Funds. So it, it's a program that was created. Um, I really can't say much because I signed okay. an NDA. Okay. But okay. yeah, it's a really nice program. Um, they, they taught us a lot. Um, and yeah, we did receive funding as well. So it's really beautiful, I won't lie. It was basically just to heighten, um, you know, Black Voices. So that's why it's YouTube Black, Black Voices. So, you know, they were um, encouraging us and stuff. So I was the first class. There's a second class that came in. The third class um, is in session right now. That's beautiful. So that's what I always also say to uh, my followers, Jorge. Just like TikTok, YouTube supports its create content creators. A lot. Creators. They really honestly do. I won't lie. YouTube really supports its creators. And I just love the fact that it's fair. You know, um, if 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 DJ Swoo comes in, does the work, Owami comes in, does the work, Owami is unknown, DJ Swoo is known. On YouTube, they, they like your success is based on you. Mm. You understand? Mm. So it's not like where someone is gonna come and be like, oh, you know, I'm gonna give DJ Swoo the flowers because I know him. Mm. No, your work is gonna speak for yourself, and this mm. is not a gamble. YouTube mm. is not a, a gamble. Create content, have people watch. You're guaranteed you will make money. Mm. And um, you know, I say my first YouTube paycheck was at twenty three thousand. How many people make twenty three thousand rands in South Africa? Yeah, that's not even people that are employed it's with degrees. They enough. don't even reach ten thousand rands. Mm. You understand? It's not so enough. I don't make twenty three thousand rands now. I do not. That that's not even my car and my rent. Mm. <laughs> you know. So you should just imagine how. YouTube is because you get paid in dollars. Mm. So when it comes to South African rents, like that's a lot of money, mm. you know. So I do th believe that you can actually change your life. You can change the life of the people around you. If not for YouTube, my nephew wouldn't be having the education that he has. And if he comes here, Rain speaks English like crazy, which I know people say that's not um, a measure of intelligence, which I get, but it does give you one up. Mm. You understand? Because mm. English is the language that we speak internationally. So, um, you know, my baby sister that is going to college now, thanks to YouTube, you know, if not for that, how would I be able to do all this stuff that I'm doing? So I do think that a lot of people are actually sleeping on it. And every single person has space mm. on this platform. Everyone. I just made my first 10 grand last month. I was popping. Your first. Yeah, last month. Spoo. Like, yeah, I've just. Are reached, you serious? I've just reached seventy thousand subscribers. Yeah, I'm so excited. This month I'm already sitting. No, but on we need to grand. sit down. You need to be making more than that. And you must teach me. You know. Yes, obviously. that's what I'm yeah. saying to say that it's not only just about the algorithm. And 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 you see, guys. I like the fact that this is what I've been telling you because you guys have been saying to me, yeah, why not because you are famous? I told you guys that YouTube does not discriminate. How many of your favorite celebrities that you know who are struggling on YouTube? So it doesn't matter whether you're famous <laughs> or not. It's about putting in the work. It does not discriminate. So stop giving me that excuse. Yeah, Rowena Spoo, you are famous. Can you say famous? So if you say famous, Sorry, sorry, I disturbed you. No, I get that. But I, I'm also saying that there's a way that you can properly monetize on YouTube. A lot of people don't know this. With the same views that you get with everything, you can make even double that. Mm. You so just there's need other to things know. that I need to know. Yes, right? mm. inside information. Come for the masterclass. That's why I, li I like us talking about this conversation. Yes. What are YouTube community guidelines? Whew, you would have to l to learn a lot on those. Like you would need to read up on those and understand. But um, obviously, I will know mostly when it comes to entertainment, blogging. Um, those that I feel like it's just don't be someone that is harassing people. Um, don't be someone that is bullying people. Um, you know, oh, there's a lot. You, how you put your hashtags. Um, uh, don't be spamming people. Don't be spamming people. Um, don't be posting content that that's is too... not yours. Mm -hmm. Violent um, content. And again, guys, I do personally believe that in this world right now, everybody's censored. Because I know the TP Joshua account on YouTube was taken down because of um, 
something that he said that was towards LGBTQI community. Oh, he said, Pastor, obviously, he he was, um, and he was talking about things that are in his Bible, you know, but his account still got taken down. Allegedly, I, <laughs> I do not know. Mm. Yeah, but I just heard that that was because of that. So you, you need to sit down and go through those yourself to fully understand I like the fact that you've just said allegedly. Yeah. Such things when reporting content, responsibility in how you report content and being factual. Very, very, very um, important. I always say that it's only a fool that will make his money to lose it. You are only stupid. Like how can your mouth lose you 500,000 rands? Now you're a slave to someone because you said something stupid for no reason. Mm. You know, so um, usually me as an entertainment blogger, I stay away from exclusive content because i've seen that there are people that bait you that have sent me stories about people and they're like i am 100 percent sure i'm like i don't care about you being 100 percent. send me proof i will never report on anything as exclusive when i don't have proof in my hands you understand and so i feel like there are certain people that are like on the hype of oh i'll be the one to break this uh what good is that if you're gonna lose a lot of money for it yeah and lawsuits also I have never had one. I am suing though someone so for defamation. What happened? They defamed my name. <laughs> no, get into the detail. You don't have to say who. Um, yeah, because I wouldn't wanna give them free airtime. Like no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but she teamed up with my ex-husband, and then they said a lot of stuff. Like that was just crazy. I felt like definitely they have to go to court um to prove it. They claimed that I damaged my womb at the age of sixteen. I can't give birth. Um, the car I drive, I got it in a fraudulent way. I got someone to get it for me. Um, they spoke about I used to go four days without bathing. I used to like it was just crazy stuff that I personally felt. Young Joyela, I can afford lawyers now, and I'm gonna come for you. That's it. Do you think good to your success? Um, started triggering people who started becoming jealous. Of yeah, you, of your she rise is a rise. she's a failing OG mm. on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, on your, this, that person is a YouTuber as well. <laughs> yes, she's a YouTuber. Are fa- you serious? A failing OG, boo. <laughs> you lie. She said OG. She, I mean, she started around about the same time with me. And I, I, now I think she's only on 5,000 subscribers or something. <gasps> if you have got an evil heart, who's going to want to follow you? Mm, and people can pick it up. Eh? Yeah, people can. So, yeah, basically that's that. Um, That's the first uh, defamation case that I have. And hopefully the only, um, I just did feel that she was just obsessed. Like the, she would maybe create 20 videos about me even in one day. Mm, That's abnormal though. I get you. Yeah, I get you. So yeah. It's I, also jealousy, professional jealousy. It definitely She's a professional jealousist. <laughs> and I think she was also trying to cloud chase using your name. Definitely. Obviously I'm sure on all the videos she puts your name there. All of them. Yeah. Like it was just crazy. I had to definitely do something about that. And, and it's nice that we are sharing about these things because you get a lot of kids who just come online and they just, um, we we'll call it cloud chasing, mm, where and they lie. just clickbait and they just lie and they go crazy mm. defaming people's characters. And I think what, what some people do not understand is that you can think of yourself now and you're like, I'm broke, I don't have any money. Honey, I'm banking on your future money. You think I care that you don't have money now? You will be my slave for the next 10 years if you have to. Because any cent, anything that is yours, I will come for. I will want if that's what I actually want. You understand? There's that guy. Um, I forgot his name. He got sued by Bonang. Uh, and Ria. she won mm. like mm. what? Half a million? Mm. Was it? Half a million? Yeah, I think it was 500,000. She, su- she sued him for 500,000. So he owes Bonang 500,000. So, so he has to pay whatever he can afford every month. Uh, other than every month, even if he is to become someone successful, he buys a car, she can take that. He buys a house, she can take that. I'm aware. That's why I didn't I didn't go I didn't go ahead in um launching a lawsuit against Musa Kaula. I mean I kinda felt, you know, I'm older, I understand these things and he's still young. No, and, he's not. And I've seen this movie before with um Abu the Shashi days, Tina, were dealt with by Khrutman Tutuzi. Um, Tutuzi. Anyway, let me not reveal his surname. Yeah. Those who know, know my generation, how difficult he made our lives, that man. But um, I've seen such people, how sadly their lives unfold over the years because of all the, all the karma, or let me say, 
because of all the energy they put out there in destroying people's lives. And I kind of felt, you know, thing is bambe. Thing is here in Doana. Um, Tlambi says, say, yang, it's a slangy, so, you know, he, he, cloud. He, the cloud, et cetera. And I was like, ah, he's a young person. He'll probably grow. He's cutting us hamba. You know, he'll, he'll probably get better. Hopefully in jail. Time. He will grow, hopefully, in jail. He no, 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 I don't, I, I'm, I don't wish jail upon no one. No, but he's going through a case, Moses, Tira's case, so. What case, what do you mean? Oh, Gonji, because he speaks about other no! people all the time. Ha yeah, he so does. you do not know? He's on YouTube now, he speaks about a lot of people. No, other than that, like something more serious. I'm sure everybody else knows. What about? Spoo, you don't know this guy killed a person. Allegedly. I'll, no. It's just a matter of was it self-defense or not. He stabbed him to death. You guys don't know this? I need to report on this then. <laughs> I need people to know about it. Yes, he's going through a case um, where... Okay, let me... <sighs> allegedly. But no, it, it's not alleged. He's going through the case right now. So if they find him guilty, he's going away for a very long time, which I don't understand why it's taking so long. So it's public information. Yes, it is public information. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, w I wouldn't know that much. I mean, I, I just recently been bumping into his videos on YouTube. I'm like, okay, cool. He's got something beautiful happening for himself. But I think the sad thing is just the type of energy you also put out. And that's what I want us to talk about. I was not specifically speaking yeah. about him. I just wanted to also for us to guide the younger guys out there that whatever you put out there, be careful so that those types of videos or that type of energy does not catch up with you in future because these videos are going to exist on the internet forever. Forever. Yeah, that's true. That is true. So I think that, you know, even if you are someone that is coming up, you want to be known, just be very careful because I do feel like there are certain people that they know that they've messed their lives so bad that, okay, if I have got chances that I'm going away for the next 25 years, I might as well just talk about anybody, you know, anyhow I want. But if you're someone that still cares about your life, you care about you being a successful person, then I would advise that you're very cautious and careful of what you say, especially about other people. And this goes to bloggers because there's a way that you can blog. You know, you can still get the attention. I'm still the most subscribed to you, uh, entertainment blogger in South Africa. But you don't see me lying on anybody. I don't lie on anyone. Because my mission when I talk about celebrities is not to destroy. It's for me to just put out what is there. And that's it. And that's why I stayed away from exclusives. Because if I, unless I have got proof, I'm not talking about it. Because I'm not about to um, you know, um, put myself in a compromised position. And also remember that there are people that send you exclusives to bait you. So if I hate DJ Spoo, I'm going to create a fake account and say, yo, DJ Spoo, Owami was seen there, there, drunk and high and this and this. And then if you're not smart enough, you're going to go and report it because someone on the internet sent you this information. But now I maybe was even the same one that sent you and then I sue you. And then when they say, get us the person, where are you going to get uh, Shamari822 from Instagram? Mm. do you understand so now mm. you are the one that is left to burn um, 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 and then you can lose everything and people can bank on your future money so you need to just be very careful on that I work with the Casanova property development and some of the developments that we're busy with in the north of Johannesburg we've been getting a lot of um, oppositions from the neighbors and understandably so but sadly some of them have gone to as far as creating fake accounts on social media and bashing our projects, um, calling us scammers, telling our clients that we're going to run away with their monies. And it's just sad to experience that world where people are that, um, they're that bitter to not want to see the next person succeed and do great things, that they're, they're willing to go to that level of pettiness, you know? Yeah. Um, I understand exactly what you're talking about. We've been experiencing it over the past um, couple of weeks. But, um, but uh, it's things that are not going to succeed. And in moving forward, I'm very proud of you. And I know that this is only the beginning. Um, and I, I'm glad also that you're not stingy with information. Because what I've experienced with this YouTube space, especially with South Africans, and congratulations to all of you guys that are doing well, the ones that are at the top uh, of your game in whatever niche you're in, they don't share information. Yeah. They're private about information. And when I, when I got the 10 grand last month, I was like, what? 
But I'm still shocked. Oh, well, I'm I'm just, I'm just started. I mean, it's a lot of money. I just thought. No, but then I'm like, no, can't you buy buy top car? I'm on YouTube, and then. <laughs> I interviewed Lelo N and she's like, my first check was 28k. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? Yeah. And then we also interviewed, I think, Sims, Sims Wright. Yeah. She made, I think, her first check was 30 something k. Yeah. I'm like, Laban 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 Sima, look at YouTube and Labatuli, the Mustang. Laban Laban Payaka, the Kasi Basokola, so that's why I came and then I was like, hey, go and channel again, and go to YouTube, be like, he never fit. Yeah. And I'm glad people like you are doing master classes and seminars to say guys come get this information i've been doing this from the beginning um from like when i got my first money cost twenty three thousand to me us lena bona naki dj school my kids are getting ten thou grow not get the poster almost ten thou correct if i can put more effort into this thing it's gonna be more but now we are used to hard work you know we're used to hustling no fire from that gig to the next one. You know what? That is why I'm laughing there. Yeah. My second YouTube channel this month, I think I put out like five story times. I made over 10 grand. You've got another YouTube Only channel. One, one. So what is it? I'm what surprised. You want to put it in the link in the it's, description? Yeah, it's, what is it? it's story times. It's just story it's, times. Is it called It's Story Times? No, Boldly or Wami. Oh, I've seen Boldly or Wami. Yes. Oh, that's so the story second times one. This month, I think I posted like five story times and I made 10 points. Only on that one, not my entertainment. So when it makes, like, I already saw what I'll make this month, and it's good money. So, like... <laughs> what is AdSense? AdSense, basically, it's a program where... Like, um... So, AdSense is... A, I don't... I don't know how to say this, but it, it's like... We get paid from AdSense, right? So, it's like, ads go to Google, and then Google plays ads on our YouTube accounts... And then the money goes to AdSense from AdSense to us. And guys, make sure when you watch South African YouTube uh, videos, you don't skip the ads. Yeah, watch the ads. Just please. watch the ads so that we keep the lights on, we get paid. Yeah. It is expensive to create content. Mm. Um, it takes your time. Uh, you, you, it, it takes money to buy equipment. It, it, it takes a lot for you to sit down and plan. So I'm happy because my followers, they really just fully support me. I'm so blessed. I feel like in South Africa, I, I might have the tightest <laughs> following. Following it's our only, It's only a risk. Le nasty si le kespanyo ves o shabaga barke cult following. Yeah. Le mc g. The chillers. Mc g is number one. Yeah. Because I'm a chiller. Yeah, I'm also a chiller. And because he will tell you that you know what I do everything for the chillers. Yeah. They pay my bills. Exactly. And let's talk about that. People who are subscribed to pay every month, you get those people as well, right? Yes, I do. And I'll, I'll, I'll expand a little bit more on that. So, so people can subscribe to have to pay you every month if they like your content. So, yeah, it's sort of like also a way to support the channel. Because as much as we talk about all this good, we also need to talk about the fact that you never know how much you're going to make every month. Mm. Um, and so it means that if you have a good month, a good, good month, you need to also have the wisdom, you know, to be someone that is good with your finances. Um, it's it's a business basically. You know, you need to treat your YouTube channel as a business. I used to love there was this other guy that back then, you know, he came to me and was like, Can you please help me? It was the time that I was helping people for free. I helped him and he sent me a screenshot of his AdSense. At that time he had made two thousand US dollars. Um wow. and that was like thirty something thousand rands and I was super excited. He was like, Well, I mean, look at this and I was so happy for him. I was like, You need to continue and then obviously we all get paid at the same time. The 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 day that we got paid, that whole week nigga never posted anything. You understand? Oh, he's um slack, he's yeah. he's chowing money. You mm -hmm. understand? The following week, you know, things are going. I think after two weeks he called me wanting to borrow money and I said How? No. <laughs> yeah, because you know he's now a ball. I'm I don't know what he did with his money. By the time he comes back on YouTube, because remember, YouTube gives you. And I'm gonna just give you a little bit of information. YouTube, as much as you have got four weeks, you basically have like proper three weeks to work. Mm. You understand? And so it overlaps because the money that I'm I'm gonna get this month it's is the money, money of from last. It's month. not money of it's this month. Money it's the money of, of last month. month. It's money of last month. So the money of this month is going to come. End of next month. Do you understand what I'm I saying? I get you. And so, when you get paid and you skip a whole week not posting, it takes a huge chunk of your money. So, if you want to have consistency, to have almost the same, you know, it will be up, it will be down, it will be up, it will be down. 
you 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 need to be someone that is consistent in what you do and so unfortunately sometimes when you're someone that is not used to money which i feel like a lot of us when we start we are like that um you get 80 something thousand rands and all of a sudden you feel like you're rich you're like ah you know and you look at your adsense and it, the money is still up because remember it's still counting from you know next thing next of next month you're down to five thousand rands now what do you do <laughs> You do you understand? Mm. And yeah, shame, I won't lie, his channel ended up dying. Mm. So you need to just also be very careful. Let's go back to the event before we close off the episode, the master class. Let's mm -hmm. give them details again. So the master class is 1480. Um please do come to my channel or or my entertainment because the I think, link is in the description, guys. Yeah, mm. I think some things maybe may change when it comes to price because I recently just got um someone that like sponsored. Oh nice. So, so it might get, be a bit cheaper. It might be a so bit cheaper. So it might be one thousand. It might be one thousand. We, we might cut out four hundred rands. Yes, I think Thank I'm you. going to cut four hundred and eighty. So I think it's gonna be one thousand rands. Um, because I did get like it, the sponsor is Vuvuzela, so thank you guys. Um, you Shout know, out to Vuvuzela, thank yeah. you guys for supporting and sponsoring <laughs> our sister. Yeah, so um, when they saw the event, they were like, okay, we're going to sponsor you, and so obviously I can't be selfish. I'm gonna cut um, the price with that. Um, so the the the, lo the I mean the um, location is going to be private for safety reasons, obviously. Yeah. And also, um, it's got the class is gonna do with a have everything is gonna be almost a whole day event so we're gonna start at 10 a.m until late you understand so those that I, I will actually split it the first session will be just about editing videos so that if you're someone that already knows how to edit videos and stuff you don't have to sit in with that um or you know just have your time but if you want to come in and join you can um if you have someone that maybe you feel um in that first session i would rather they go in learn how to edit then it's the same price because you're gonna come in for the second session maybe um and so after that i'm also going to teach you guys like um you know the the the, the youtube guidelines i can i will like give you the basics but you need to read and understand that um especially when you're an entertainment blogger because it now falls under copyright um you know um uh, 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 material you need to learn about copyright as well especially if you're an entertainment blogger um, and I mean just anybody but mostly entertainment blogging because we talk about people who are using people's clips or using this so you need to know the rules and then after that I'm, I'm gonna talk about monetization how to monetize properly so that you can make the most money like what you're going to sell me after this I'm episode tell you after so this I start episode. making more money yes and you will see it will definitely work for you it, yeah. it will work for you as I'm saying I think I posted like five story times and I made ten plus and I'm sure you posted a lot yo I posted a lot <laughs> exactly I, I still don't know I'm still learning yeah. Yeah, yeah, so there are certain like things yeah. that you can do to make more money. Okay. Um, and then also it's gonna after after the the class we're gonna the same WhatsApp group I'm gonna keep it for three months. So I'm gonna still be having updates. I'm gonna be checking everyone's channel. Are you consistent? If you're someone that is not serious about your craft, I'm not gonna be following you around, like asking, hey, why are you not posting? No, I need to know. Okay, you're posting. The, the 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 quality not necessarily the quality of the video the quality of your content itself how are you um you know relating with your followers what's going on so those are the stuff that i'm going to actually check and those that um want to they will prevail the one person that i actually tutored from the beginning is the only person in south africa right now in the entertainment industry um entertainment blogger if i'm not mistaken that also has 200,000 subscribers are you serious yes as Who's much that? as we had a fallout i don't want to say him because we had a fallout oh but fallout. um okay. yeah whether she wants to admit know, it or wow, not i'm the one no child's play. that actually and i used to like um uh, advertise a channel and stuff and so when it's we, with that also people that are going to come they are all going to also receive um free shout outs we're also going to do collaborations within ourselves so there's a lot of things that i'm actually planning and i feel like it's I excite it's exciting for me because it's kind of like an experiment as well let me see how how how, how can i like how far can i push you yes let yes. me also see that so if you're serious about it you will definitely make it there's no way because even if you let's say you pay 1000 rands um and in that month the first month you can make 5000 rands if you didn't do well mm. you've already made your money back and you got the skill you can continue to do it and that's it and i think with the other part again maybe that i can also say is that please don't be lazy 
even till today i edit my own content mm. i film i edit i upload you know mm. um and yes soon i'll get an editor but after how many years so mm. i was able to keep all the money for myself mm. as much as it was more hard work and everything but at least i was able to keep the money to myself because mm. i said that there's a lot of people that you know oh i want to go to a studio i want to do this nothing. and they're still waiting for that to happen mm -hmm. when they have money no. and you can just start today sit home use your phone you've got a smartphone the biggest misconception is thinking that your content quality with, with videos and stuff has to be pashash no if your content what you are saying is valuable trust and believe people will listen look at Penua. exactly you know he just grabs his phone and he just does this yeah and then he, he you know he's consistent. and he puts in work though he's consistent every day he is. every he is consistent. and he's been every day even even before i even met him mm -hmm. he had been and that's how i found him i found him because he was recording every day yeah so stop waiting you know stop waiting and the other thing again that i can say is that all this information that i'm going to teach you most of it you can get it online but it will take you a lot of a long time because it also took us a long time and there are certain things that Hacking the system a bit, they're not there. Mm, mm. <laughs> Some of us That's stumbled, I can't wait. After we finish stumbled podcast, into that, you know, there's certain information that you know you 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 will know, and I can't publicly even say that. And then, oh, anyway, let me tell you how I how I bumped into when I started how I started knowing you. I think it was, I don't know if it was any last year or the year before. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Sis Bashin Pisane. Oh. I think you were the first person for her to sit down with because I had been asking her like hey, I'd like to have you on the Hustlers Corner, I'd like to have you and Plutik and Plutik and Plutik and then all of a sudden she's sitting with this lady and I'm like Who is that? Mad <laughs> I'm going to tell her my interview <laughs> That's when I started following you Come on, Zanum Oh No, so yeah, no And Uzbash have had to beg me to do that interview You know, that sit down uh, for me, it was actually personal because she's my friend. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's why I was also very emotional. I don't know if you saw. Yeah, video, no, I saw you know, it, yeah. Because this is my friend, you know, I, I kind of know privileged information. Seeing her cry was also just affecting me because I, I just knew where it was coming from. Um, and so, yeah, basically that is that. I'm not a fan of sitting down with celebrities. Yeah, no, I get you. <laughs> and I like the fact that you, 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 you have shown me that... I don't need to rely on guests. I don't need yeah. to rely on celebrities. I don't need to rely on people letting me down, coming late, not showing up for me to create content. Mm -hmm. I can just have a camera and create content directly speaking to the world. Yeah. That's what you've been able to do. And I think oh, yes. you're an inspiration for a lot of other people. Who, wow, I don't actually necessarily need to keep on sitting with different people. I can do it on my own. No, I, I, I don't. I do not, honestly. Um, and I really honestly enjoy it. However, I am having a new show that we are currently about to start filming. Nice. So, exclusively to the Hustlers Corner, yeah. um, it's called To Hell and Back. To Hell and Back. Yes. And that's going to be on Boldly or Wami. It's going to be on Boldly or Wami. Nice. Yes. So, um, I'm going to be sitting with real people, with real stories, and we're going to just be talking to hell and back. People that have experienced things that even I am like... <gasps> Because I've been, you know, getting been emails and, and, and looking. And I, I do personally feel that um, if it was a matter of the time that I was depressed and going through everything, if I was able to watch other people that were going through a lot, it would have made things better for me. Mm. But I was just struggling in this and I'm in my head. I think I'm alone. I feel like my life is horrible. I feel like, you know, I'm the only one. Where else? The reality is outside a lot of people are going through and we were at least blessed because when my father kicked us out We had an aunt that took us in and she never abused us. My mother's side of the family. They are angels mm -hmm. You understand so they took us in um, when I say we we're homeless It was a matter of you, you don't really feel home because the only home you knew for years You don't have access to that anymore and your mom is late, you know stuff like that but we were not homeless in, in 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 a sense of we were in the cold. My aunt and 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 you know my mother's sister and brother they made sure of that. So I know that there are other kids that you know they're losing their parents or the same situation as us, and they don't even have that aunt. They go there, they are still abused and stuff. And so I feel like you know it's 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 okay to have or it's like I feel like it's very 
good to have people that are going through stuff like that to speak out and actually show success to say that i went to hell but i'm back you can also make it then i feel like a lot of people won't sit and dwell in in the pain and what they're going through because they see someone that is that went through the same situation and made it or worse guys go check out an interview i did with sisters back and bisan she opens up about her accident and what she's had to go through and uh you know, when I advertised the, the post, the episode, a lot of people were like, but she comes from a rich family. What does she mean she wanted to commit suicide? Go listen to that story. What an inspirational story it was. Yeah. And that's the thing. Sometimes we look at people on just surface value. And just, barking, you know, just... And we actually don't know their stories. And sometimes we can admire people on social media, but we don't know what they're dealing with. True, because the, I feel like that's why I refuse to even be close to celebrities. Because from now on, I can't talk about you, Smoo. I, I, no, I can't talk about you, but it's already compromised. <laughs> I, I, I know the human side of you. Mm, Do you understand you. what I'm saying? Mm, so, guess. like, it, it's different from, like, oh, who did you smoo that is over there? You understand? I, I don't you. know you as a person, so it makes my job easier. Mm. I always laugh and say, guys, chilling with celebrities could just talk. I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, could just talk. <laughs> 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 you just talk. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to do that. It's anymore. like when we were sitting downstairs when you guys were chatting. Yeah. I'm not going to get content. Get content. Like some yeah, of the things that you guys were saying. I'm not going to get content. Did they, why did I just come with a camera and just here? Yeah, you, know? you understand. Mm. So, so, yeah, when you're an entertainment blogger, yeah, it, it just has to be like that. But I feel like at this point, you know, I'm going to get to a point where I, I won't be able to, like, completely stop it. But that's why, like, I'm, like, to hell and back, I just want normal people with real people with real stories. They're not celebrities, nothing. They're just sitting at home because I feel like these are the people that go through the most even more than celebrities mm. yeah and this youtube thing can open so many doors i mean i, I guess i know dr Sil Susan Bofu walsh is somebody who's prominent and we know his father but youtube just opened doors for him he's now on national television and he's not the only one there's a lot of people who started on youtube who went uh, mainstream um who i forgot michali as well right yes Michelle. even even lasizwe yes a lot even of people will say he is um Kanyimbao's brother, uh, Kanyimbao's brother, but oh, yeah. he started on YouTube to blow yes. up, to blow himself up. I think the person that I'm more proud of more than everyone else is this guy, man. What's his name? Is the Ghost Kubi. No. There's a young yeah. man who's killing YouTube now. He also. is, yes, but he, those are pranks and <laughs> No, But that's he dope. Is, that's that's no, his lane. No, it's content. Yeah, it's his lane, lane yeah. that is great. For young people. Yeah. Yes. But I'm talking about who is this? I forgot his name. Is the one that slept Musa, man. I don't know. Mushen Digi. Oh, Mushen. Um, uh, some people don't even know. He started on. The one who dresses nice, right? Yes. Yeah. Have you seen so his house? So means his ex, right? No. Not, oh, Mushen. Oh, yeah. Yo, Mushen is funny. Yo. Utum Patela. Oh, sorry, Mushen. Yo, yo, yo. Mushen is killing the game. Killing oh, Mushen started on YouTube. Yes. I do remember he had videos way, way back then. What are you know. Yeah. I just know him from TV. I think he started. Did he not start? I think he did. Okay, yeah, but he can um, open I a lot of doors. I tend to be corrected, but I think he did. So, yeah, though. he has done really, really well for himself. And congratulations to all South Africans who've been killing this YouTube yeah. things. Thank you so much, guys, for showing us that it's possible. I mean, I'm going to shout and keep screaming and letting the masses know about this YouTube thing. I'm going to make sure you all get out of poverty. All you young people <laughs> who are unemployed, YouTube is like he my faith. That is the And thank you to people like Boos Owami who are willing to share the info. God bless you, my sister. I have no doubt that in the next few years you'll be a multi-millionaire at the rate at which you're going. Your work ethic, reinvesting back into your channel, studying another channel, sharing information with other people, teaching, finding ways to monetize, and finding ways to just look after your family and just rise out of the ashes that you've been through. Uh, may you continue to be an inspiration. I'm looking forward to reading your books one day. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing your documentaries. I'm looking forward to seeing you on mainstream media because that's where you're going to go eventually. Hopefully. <laughs> of course. I mean, what I love about YouTube is that when you don't stop, yeah. you keep growing. You yeah, keep that's growing. True. So the sky's that's the limit. True. Yeah, that's definitely true. Your last words to the people out there look at them on the camera and tell them, hey, guys, um, just, just you know, whatever you want to say to them. Yo, guys, I won't lie, Shem. Um, if you want to start a YouTube channel, please do. Sorry. Um, it's. I don't even know what to say. It changed my life. 
And I think that sometimes when you talk, people just think, there are certain people today that say, oh, I mean, you're privileged. And I'm like, privileged? Do you know where I come from? Do you know what I've gone through? Do you, you know? Um, but YouTube can make you money that you have never even imagined. Like, in ways that I, I don't even know how to explain it. I won't even lie. Like, I, I, I can't explain it. Um, you, you make money on YouTube. Like, when I say I have a good month, like, I have made money. You understand? Even on my worst month, I don't make 30000 so you can make a lot of money on youtube trust me um and again it's not a a a, a one we get quick no, it's yeah. not. It's gonna it's take not. some time yeah. so if you are gonna think that i'm gonna go then make seventy thousand the first month you you are joking it's work just take it as work um yes there's an element of of luck there's an element of privilege for for other people in terms of like maybe you know the quality or the pretty privilege or whatever but everyone is guaranteed success if you just are consistent and you do your research because again there are people that are on one niche that keeps not getting them views for years and years and you're still there kind of treat it as a business and youtube will pay you like a business yeah we love you my sister and i appreciate you finally this interview has happened <laughs> I'm so finally. proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Guys, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, finally. See? Finally it happened. Mm -hmm. And a few days ago, we were supposed to do it again. I think it was two or three weeks ago and you yeah, were sick. I was sick. How are you feeling now? I'm fully back. Nice. I'm, <laughs> I'm fully back, yeah. We didn't even speak about your other business because the last yeah. time we had spoken last year, you were just about to launch. And, um, I, and I watched and I think you did launch it. Yeah. Beautiful space. What yeah. happened? Oh, I had to close down. What happened? The reason is going to shock you. Yeah? I didn't have workers. You didn't have staff? I didn't. Why couldn't you find staff? So many people are unemployed. I uh, advertised everywhere. I think that I still have a bit of bitterness. <laughs> I had so many clients, I didn't have staff. And the one that I had, she saw that I was struggling so much, started just making crazy demands, wanting days off even on times that were like really busy and stuff. And I ended up just closing down. Was it a difficult decision to close down? It was a very painful one. I only just took stuff out of the salon, I think, this past weekend. Um, they're in storage as we speak. I'm about to start selling all the equipment and yeah. I love your honesty and there is no shame in cutting your losses. No. If you can see that the business is not working out, it just keeps on becoming more loss after more loss after more loss every month. Cut the losses and keep it moving. Yeah, no, uh, absolutely. I um, I tried everything. I did rent it out and then, you know, that also did not work out. Um, and so, you know what I said, um, due to the fact that I felt like it was starting to affect my mental health to a point where I was not um, producing as I could on YouTube. I'm like, girl the salon or your main source of income so it wasn't really a difficult um decision it was however a very painful one and so i'm uh, the thing is with myself I'm, I'm a realist i'm very real with myself like girl let's sit down and have this meeting <laughs> i talk to myself a lot <laughs> and so when that happened i was like you know what let's just do it and then you know i did it and i was crying not so long on youtube i was crying guys i took stuff to storage my heart and uh so many ninjas were talking about to say oh i remember when i had to close my business down it was and all those um comments they really honestly did help me i think with me i'm very comfortable with myself I don't have a point to prove to anybody everything that i have i'm super grateful for because i come from nothing so even if someone was to come and say oh you lost a hundred grand here i'm like yeah but i'm making more so i'm fine you understand but am i going to give up absolutely not um golden beauty exclusive that's the name of the salon we have lashes we also have um um eyelash glue I just got approved on Take A Lot. So I'm going to be oh, selling Oh, so you're going to be selling on Take A Lot. Absolutely. Well done, baby. Yes. Well and done, so... baby girl. So guys, <laughs> e-commerce is the future. It is. You see now, she's growing. We're closing off the episode. Load shedding just happened. It affected the last few minutes of our, I think maybe the last 20, 30 minutes of the audio. Hopefully you guys still can hear what we're saying. Yeah. But I like the fact that this was an educational episode so they can actually get to get a, a glimpse of some of the challenges that we experience behind the scenes. Yeah. Sometimes you shoot content, it's lost. Sometimes an episode, they can't find sound. Oh, the sometimes they lose an episode. Or sometimes a camera is lost. You know, things like that happen. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot. 
and but I, I think that I, for me, most things are just because I do everything myself. Yeah. So no camera can be lost or, you know, but I've had like corrupted uh, memory cards or I forgot to plug in the mic. It's crazy. Sometimes you do an entire episode and there's like no, no sound, audio. No audio. I, uh, I, I just get defeated and yeah. then I just, guys, all the footage is ruined. I'm done for today. Like, I will see you tomorrow. Like I recorded a fire episode with Penuel and um, uh, Mr. Mzwanele Mani. Um, I think that around the times of um, former President Jacob Zuma's case, and you know he was a spokesperson for the Jacob Zuma Foundation. Mm-hmm. I was so excited about that episode. It was got a very, very, it was an explosive episode, and the type of content he shared, some of the things that he said there. Ah. Uh, we lost the episode. <laughs> Till today, Ntate Manyi is mad at us. He does not even want to come to the Hustlers Corner again. He's like, and I understand, you know, I understand. No, he, but we sat like for two that hours, happens. you know. Yeah. Yeah, but I think with time he'll he'll, he'll come, he'll get better. No, it but happens. But I think Leon and I didn't He went there. He was excited. Gave it his he all. Gave it his all, you yeah. know. But the episode could not be put out there. And he's not the only one. I mean, Lee owes. I think he owes Kiabe. Um, she's a she's an actress. Yeah, it happened twice. Wow. Can you imagine? <laughs> I had to, I had to, I had to really apologize. I don't mean to laugh, but maybe the universe is saying something. Ah, oh, guys, like the second time it happened again, and then not not only her, who else? Like a lot of other people out there, guys. Wait, I might be laughing, and this, you better make sure this is safe, because <laughs> now I'll, I'll also not be the one that's laughing. No, these things honestly do happen. Like they do. And if you're someone that deals with like recording and stuff, you fully understand. Mm. Like the moment you say, oh, the, the audio is lost or the footage is just like, okay, when can we record? Because you, you know and you understand. But I do understand that other people may not um, necessarily understand. Um, and that happens. But unfortunately, this is technology, guys. There's so much error that can happen. You, from now, just moving that from the tripod, you can drop the... The, the camera and mm. the footages are gone, you know, mm. the memory card gets corrupted, whatever. So, yeah, it's crazy. So, thank you very much. Um, looking forward to the part two. Yeah. So, let's give you a few more months to achieve more things. Yeah. And then let's sit down either towards the end of this year or early next year. Absolutely. And this year is already six months away. I can't believe it, guys. Yo, <laughs> the year is like so short, eh? Yeah. Is it no, because actually, we're getting no. older? No, no, no. Let's do let's do another one before the end of the year. Yeah. And then we'll do another follow-up again next, next year, year. Because from now on, you're the friend of the show. Of course. Because you've got the knowledge on how this YouTube thing works. Yeah. So now let's go behind the scenes. Go show me some more how to make more money. <laughs> I want to know how to make more money on YouTube. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> ah, so okay, let me let me let me let me close it off nicely. Founder of South Africa's biggest entertainment YouTube channel. Boldly Owami is, is her second channel, but the biggest one is called Owami Entertainment. The link is in the description. She's just started, bo- started Boldly Owami. said it's on 5,000 subscribers. No, 11. Yo! So nice <laughs> We're double. moving fast. You're moving yes, really quick. Yes, yes, nice. Yes, yes. So yeah. she's now even grabbing you by the hand. She started a new channel and she wants to grow with you. Join her, not next week, right now. Go join the masterclass. Learn how to do this thing. We're doing it. I'm not too cool for the internet. I'm an OG. I come from the mainstream. But here I am. I'm YouTubing every day. I'm learning as I go. And I also want to take you guys along. Follow my other um, personal channel, DJ Smoo. And let us, let's do this YouTube thing, man. <laughs> Shop, I'll see you guys you. soon. <laughs>